You like music? The pill. For the video section of my project, I would like to discuss and examine various forms of product placement by comparing and contrasting the different ways in which studios implement the advertising of products in their films it becomes easier to identify and determine what makes some forms of product placement effective and what makes others jarring and immersion breaking. The first type of product placement I'd like to talk about is what I would call mentioned but not seen. This type of product placement has the benefit of being a lot more discreet, almost to the point where the audience doesn't know it's even product placement. This subtlety gives it the benefit of not breaking the audience's immersion as they watch the movie as it feels like something they would say in a normal situation. Arguably the best example of this style of product placement is the famous Royale with cheese scene from Quentin Tarantino's 1994 film, Pulp Fiction. It feels less like a brand deal with a multi-billion dollar fast food chain, and more like two friends having a casual conversation thanks to Quentin Tarantino's snappy dialogue. And in Paris, you can buy a beer at McDonald's. And you know what they call a, a quarter pounder with cheese uh, in Paris? They don't call it a quarter pounder with cheese? Oh I man, they got the metric system. They wouldn't know what the fuck a quarter pounder is. And what do they call it? They call it the Royale with cheese. Royale with cheese. That's right. What do they call a Big Mac? Big Mac's a Big Mac, but they call it Le Big Mac. A Le Big Mac. <laughs> <laughs> what do they call a Whopper? I don't know. I didn't go on a Burger King. The next type of product placement I'd like to talk about is when the product itself is the focus of the media. Basically stopping the story to include a commercial, this style of advertising has more or less fallen out of favor today, with most audiences finding it too blatant and too jarring. But it used to be very popular back when TV was still a relatively new medium. Early TV audiences would very often hear the phrase, Tonight's show is brought to you by... One of the most famous examples of this style of advertising was when episodes of the Flintstones would open with an ad for Winston cigarettes. Gee, we gotta do something, Fred. Okay, how's about taking that? I, I got a better idea. Let's take a Winston break. That's it! Winston is the one filter cigarette that delivers flavor 20 times a pack. Winston's got that filter blend. Yeah, Fred. Filter blend makes the big taste difference, and only Winston has it up front where it counts. Here. Ahead of the pure white filters, Winston packs rich tobacco, specially selected and specially processed for good flavor in filter smoking. Yeah, Bonnie, Winston tastes good like a cigarette chug. The third type of product placement that I'd like to address is one I find the most fascinating, and that's when the product being advertised is central to the plot. This type of advertising can work very well as the audience may often not realize they're being marketed a product at all. Some examples of this style are the titular White Castle fast food chain in Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle, the Red Ryder BB gun in A Christmas Story, and the Chevrolet Camaro in the Transformers series. However, in my opinion, the best example of product placement becoming central to the plot is the 2000s film Castaway, where Wilson volleyballs become not only central to the plot, but become a central character. Wilson, where are you? Wilson! 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 I'm sorry! I'm sorry, Wilson! Wilson, I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Welcome! I can't! The next kind of product placement is the one most people seem to have a problem with, and that is blatant placement. This kind of product placement is characterized by its appearance making no sense in the context of the scene it's in, making it very apparent to the audience that its inclusion was there only for the studio to make money. This method will very often have the product take center stage on screen, or feature characters going out of their way to interact with it. While Michael Bay's Transformers series has been guilty of stuffing each movie to the brim with this kind of product placement, I believe it is this scene in particular from the most recent one that exemplifies it best. Okay, sir? 
You better have insurance. Insurance? It's a freaking spaceship. You go get insurance on a freaking spaceship. Good luck with that, buddy. It's your car? Huh? Sweetie, hand me my alien gun. Here you go. 